Bulovinaka. My name is David Gegeo. I am the acting director of the Oceania Center for Arts, Culture and Pacific Studies here at the University of the South Pacific, Lothala campus in Suva. Welcome to the MOOC on Pacific Studies offered by the University of the South Pacific. And in this session, I'll be talking about post-colonial critique of metrocentrist conventional wisdom in the Pacific. At the end of the session, you will be able to evaluate metrocentrist knowledge as having some, but not all the answers to the challenges being faced by Pacific societies. And that you'll be able to critically evaluate Pacific ways of knowing, doing and being as part of a Pacific cultural heritage, which must be respected and conserved despite um, inevitable social change. And that you'll be able to develop the ability to articulate persuasively that sustainable development is not new, but has always been practiced by Pacific Island societies informed by a minimalist and um, ethical philosophy. This will become, uh, this point will become um, clearer as we move along. Now, how is Pacific studies different or unique in the way the staff teaches the subjects? For example, climate change, cultural diversity, development, globalization and change, arts, good governance, philosophy and ethics. These are subjects that are commonly taught in virtually any department. But how, how, is, how, how do we teach this in the Pacific, in Pacific studies that are unique and that are different? Well, the first thing that we do is that we avoid what I refer to here as epistemological, methodological and pedagogical duplication or regurgitation. In other words, we just don't teach them and then teach this subject and then put Pacific label on it. That's not, that's not the difference we're looking at here. We're looking at something very different. Uh, so that this means doing something different, but not for the sake of being different. It's a difference that I refer to as a difference which connects and has to do with epistemological or epistemic difference. It's a difference which builds interdisciplinary epistemic bridges or connectivity that bridges disciplines. And this epistemic difference is firmly rooted or anchored in Pacific ways of knowing, doing and being. Again, we keep coming back to this because this is the foundation of what we do in Pacific Studies, that we anchor our teaching, our pedagogies, our methodologies in Pacific ways of knowing, doing and being. So that being innovative and critical analysis and reflections are informed by Pacific ways of knowing, doing and being. Now the aim is to provide or promote a body of knowledge about a subject or phenomenon that is well-rounded or holistic as can be. Uh, firmly grounded in Pacific ways of knowing, doing, and being. And what you have here in front of you is a very rough idea of the holistic approach that we take in Pacific studies, in teaching our subjects. We have knowledge up there, and then praxis, or theory and praxis, and ontology meaning life. This is sort of the, the vision that we have um, guiding our day-to-day -day operation teaching in Pacific Studies. Now, we do not teach courses on innovation or critical analysis or reflection per se. In other words, we do not teach these uh, courses per se or by themselves. What we do is that we impart innov innovative and critical analysis and reflection skills to students in the process of teaching a subject itself. So in other words, we teach critical analysis or critical thinking or reflection within the subject itself, in the process of teaching the subject itself. So for example, in Pacific Studies courses, students are encouraged to ask questions or raise comments about virtually anything on the assigned readings. And then it's the facilitators or lecturers who then respond to the questions and comments with examples informed by Pacific epistemologies or ways of knowing, doing and being. Now, of course, the ability to do this uh, comfortably means simultaneously drawing from and interweaving 
both book knowledge and indigenous knowledge. And indigenous knowledge is especially critical as Pacific studies is all about Pacific cultures, societies and communities. Now this might lead you to ask a question of is Pacific studies teaching students to think outside of the box? Our response is both yes and no. Yes, because we want our students to develop the skills of independent and critical thinking about issues that affect the lives of our communities in the Pacific and the world. And we do this because we believe, strongly believe that, and we would like it to be the case, that when our students graduate with the degrees in Pacific Studies, we know that they are going to hold important positions or leadership positions in the governments, whether in the islands or somewhere else, and that they'll hold important positions in the NGOs, churches, communities, and in the business world. So we tailor our students towards holding important positions in these uh, areas who can then think independently. We want our students to do that. So when they go into a job, that they know what they're doing and that they don't have to be told what to do. And we, I, we say no, because independent critical thinking is not new, but has always been part of Pacific societies. Uh, which got uh, de-emphasized or dismissed uh, during colonization. In other words, critical thinking or independent critical thinking is part of any human society. Uh, in the Pacific, uh, these uh, were de-emphasized or dismissed uh, because of the, um, the colonial experience. Now, in emphasizing critical thinking in, in courses in Pacific studies, we in essence or in principle are re-emphasizing critical thinking as something which had viably been applied in the past and can be applied today and in the future. In Pacific Studies we believe that it is very important and that we, that's why we, we want to resurrect or bring the critical thinking back into learning and teaching and planning. In essence we are simply bringing back a cultural practice which has always been part of teaching, planning and learning and engagement in community development in the Pacific. It's not something new, we just bring it back because we believe in the power and the efficacy of independent critical thinking. In a sense then, what we're engaging in is, is encouraging or promoting what I refer to here as a paradigm shift, but one that's informed by the past in the interest of moving into the future. So in other words, it's not just promoting or putting into, into into operation, into speed, paradigm shift for the sake of paradigm shift. We have a vision behind that, which is to inform the present, to move things into the future. Some reasons for the paradigm shift, and one reason we give is that metrocentric knowledge cannot and does not have all the answers to the, cha to the challenges facing Pacific Island communities today and in the future. And it is not the criticism of uh, metrocentric knowledge or Western knowledge. It's just a fact of life that no body of knowledge has all the answers. Metrocentric knowledge can give answers to certain things in pretty much the same way that, say, um, Asian knowledge can give answers to some certain things. But no body of, no body of knowledge has all the answers because there's so much challenges, so many question so many problems that our approach in Pacific Studies is to use bodies of knowledge that are applicable or viable in responding to challenges that we have in the Pacific but led or informed by Pacific epistemologists or ways of knowing and doing. And I we say here that there are some challenges which are better resolved through Pacific Islands indigenous ways of knowing, doing and being. And Pacific ways of knowing, doing and being are part of Pacific Islands cultural heritage and so must be respected and conserved. And I, like I said earlier on, this is part of a cultural heritage. And in teaching it, we're also preserving it. We're also making sure that it continues, that it's preserved for future generation. Not only conserved, but also respected. Because something can be conserved, but if it's not respected for what it is, then uh, it's almost... Um, uh, no use conserving it. I'll take the case of sustainable development or good governance. 
Uh, these were introduced into the Pacific from overseas in the 1980s and the 1990s, um, the big words, and they're still around. Uh, they were introduced in a way that uh, when you read the literature on sustainable development and good governance, there's a, there's, all, there's a denial of the existence or that they ever existed in Pacific Island traditional societies. And just the fact that our governments sort of like embrace this and welcome them um, as if they never existed, but they did exist in the Pacific, only practiced in different ways. That there is the difference. They were here before European, um, um, uh, before the Europeans came and before these were introduced. They were here in our societies. And I just give an example here of uh, good governance that there's a language in the Solomon Islands that has a word for that, and it's called Gomori Anga, which translates as live at the head or top of life or the highest peak of life. And that's what good governance is. When everything goes well, um, there is the, the high standard of living um, in society. And the, the people in the Solomon Islands, this grassroots community, has a word for it. And the same thing with sustainable development. The same community, the same grassroots community or culture in the Pacific or in the, in the Solomon Islands has a word for it. And it's, it is Sasi Ru Kualakoni Anga. And it translates to English as roughly as do things with no waste. In other words, avoid being wasteful. And another definition of sustainable, or sustainable development is Sasi Ru Mai Mai O Lia. In other words, translate in English as doing things that transcends death. And again, you can see the, the whole idea, the whole concept of sustainability in this expression or in these definitions. So all this is to say that we have these in the Pacific. And in Pacific studies, we dig deeper to see where these are and we bring them to the front so that they can be used, they can be taught, they can be passed on to future generations. A sustainable development in metro sense, uh, sense or practice usually implies continuous availability of funds. Now here's another area that we come in, we define these words uh, so that communities can, can really understand them, um, what they mean. So that, for example, sustainable, sustainable development in the Western sense means continuous availability of funds. As long as funds are coming in, a project is, is sure to continue. But as soon as funds dry up, uh, then, uh, of course, uh, the result is um, uh, projects fail. Now, in the Pacific, uh, in Pacific society, sustainable development implies uh, high ethical standards. In other words, a project or certain activities are sustainable only because because they're backed up by high ethical standards and not continuous of funds. Now, there's a kind of difference that in Pacific studies we look at and trying to bring to the front so, they, they, so that we see the difference between them. And the same for good governance. In metrocentric sense or practice, good governance tends to emphasize proper management of economic issues. Whereas in Pacific uh, societies, Good governance implies proper management of ethical and moral issues. Now these are the, again I'm repeating, these are kind of differences in definitions and philosophy that we look at and bring to the front in our teaching. Uh, the same kind of subjects in Pacific studies, but founded or informed by Pacific ways of knowing, doing and being. Our overall vision then in Pacific studies is that we dispatch knowledge where it can be most effectively put to use. That's our vision. So that knowledge is not, we just don't dispatch knowledge for the sake of dispatching knowledge, but where it can be effectively put to use. In other words, we teach to make a difference. But it's a difference, as I've been saying all along, informed or guided by specific ways of knowing, doing and being. And it's a difference which makes our students well-versed in Pacific knowledge, cultures, 
and societies. And in doing this, we try to avoid duplication or regurgitation. And in the final analysis of vision is to produce professionals who are well-rounded citizens and productive members of society, regardless of the careers or professions they may choose to pursue.